2021. <clears throat> this is Wes Fryer and tonight we're going to cook a picanha. We're going to grill a picanha and you're probably going to hear Moose contributing to the, <laughs> the background noise with his toy. Um, I saw a video last week that Harry Sue um, of uh, Slap Your Daddy Barbecue had done and he inspired me and so um, I've, I've had picanha a, a few times so this is a um, cut from sirloin, and I was very excited to be able to find this um, because this is not a super easy um, cut of steak to find, and um, they only had one at the butcher shop uh, that I went to, so I'll show you this a little close. Um, it has a fat cap, and so what I'm going to actually need to do is trim a little bit off because you can see that that's a pretty thick um, fat cap, and I don't want to I don't want to get rid of all that, but I'm going to actually trim that off uh, a little bit like a brisket, I guess. So there's about a quarter of an inch left, um, and then I'm going to go ahead and salt it and uh, let it sit and hope that the dog is not going to interfere. Uh, and then we're going to fire up the Weber kettle. And we're going to be cooking it in direct heat on some metal skewers. And then I've got some chimichurri sauce that uh, I'm going to try to put together. So I'll uh, speed part of this up and then give uh, a little bit of dialogue as we go along. taking a little bit of fat off that. I think I usually probably trim too much fat off of my briskets and I don't want to take too much fat because that's really going to add to the flavor here but uh, just like I think a brisket if the fat is too thick it's not going to render and that's not going to be great. So I've got about a quarter inch left maybe eighth inch to a quarter inch. I think that's going to be good. Um, I would definitely rather have uh, a little bigger salt, um, but anyway, I had to had to go with what I had. Um, I would also rather have a schmear. I think that's what Harry used in his um, as a bit of a bonding agent. Uh, my briskets I actually use mustard, but anyway, I had some beef broth, so I put that down just to you know make the the meat a little bit moister. So I'm gonna leave this out. We're gonna put moose outside. Um, <laughs> and I'm going to let this uh, warm up a little bit to room temperature. We're going to get the uh, Weber kettle going, and uh, again, I'm going to cook on indirect heat, so I'm going to try to uh, basically get a, get a nice fire going in my chimney, uh, which I'm going to then dump in uh, with some extra coals, and uh, I don't know exactly how hot we're going to be getting it, uh, but probably somewhere, uh, somewhere in the ballpark of 350 degrees. I guess we'll find out when we put the, the, uh, the temperature probe out there, uh, but I'm going to cook it indirect, and we're going to be cooking for temperature, and then I'll sear it, I think, at the end. So... Uh, let's go get the, the coals going, uh, and then we'll cut this uh, thing up and talk about how we're going to do that. All right, we have got the coals going. I've actually paused, paused the microwave while uh, we're doing a little baked potatoes. I don't know that that is uh, probably not a Brazilian uh, traditional food to have with this. Uh, but what we're going to do now is we're going to we're going to go ahead and cut this up and we're going to put it on the skewers. Uh, this is kind of fun. I don't know that I've ever cooked on these. These skewers, my mom and I went with my grandmother to Turkey in 1982, and I inherited these from uh, mom and dad when they moved out of their house into their retirement community, I think. And so anyway, I'm going to use these, and I think I'm going to be able to to use two. And what my goal is um, is that the meat is. Um, the, the grain of the meat goes this way, and when we eat it, we're going to want to cut across. Um, <laughs> by the way, oh, thank you, Moose. He has just moved his hit, whipped his snake around with his head. Um, or maybe my head's going to be cut off now. Um, so what I want to be doing is I want to be cutting here. Um, well, let me just show you. All right, so you can see that the, the meat is, uh, the grain is this way. So... I think I'm going to cut this in four different pieces, and I'm going to be folding this 
onto the skewers. And so I don't want them to be too wide. Again, the reason why I'm cutting with the grain of the meat right now is because when we eat this, we're gonna be cutting the opposite side. So it looks like I may actually have five pieces instead of four. All right. I probably should have sharpened my, my knife right before I started. because I saw Harry do it, and if it's good enough for Harry, it's good enough for me. It might make it easier to flip this, I don't know. This guy doesn't look as good. This one looks really good. That looks professional. All right, so now we've got our picanha on the skewers. Let's go see how our fire is doing and see how close we are to being ready to put this on the fire. The charcoal is looking good. It is nice and great over. This, uh, this is a very experienced Weber grill that I have had for over 20 years, like the whole marriage, I think. And we're gonna celebrate our 25th next year, I think. So I actually, this last year, did get, um, I probably should have cleaned out some of the ashes. I got a, lower grate a new replacement and then I got a an upper grate as well so I have big dreams of getting some fancier barbecue equipment at some point maybe in the not too distant future I started smoking briskets and other meats about a year ago and have just a very small portable uh, propane moose fryer. No, sir. That's great. Did that get on the video? Um, we, will, we will burn this to sterilized perfection before we put the meat on. How about that? on for just a little bit warm up I'm gonna get the meat uh, and uh, get my my uh, thermometer my probe and be right back all right we're ready to put on the steaks and before I do I thought I would mention that you know one of the absolute best things that I've ever had since I've started kind of becoming a little more serious about not only smoking meat but just barbecue is this thermo pro uh, temperature probe um, I did end up having to order extra or replacement probes, but thankfully, you know, these are very cheap on Amazon. And so what I've done is I've actually put my number one probe uh, just right here into the thickest part of my largest picana uh, meat piece, and then I've got my other one here in, in the smaller one. 
And so I'm going to go ahead and take this out, put it on. Uh, we're uh, starting out at about 54, 55 degrees internal temperature, and we're wanting to cook to about 145. I'd like to cook to medium. And here we go. All right, let's put it on. Let me just shoot the grill. So, I'll go ahead and lay these boys here in the middle. I don't know, maybe I should have put actually one of my, my temperature probes at an ambient temperature, but anyway, we're gonna lay them there and I'm gonna time this and you know, for regular steak I'm cooking direct, it's gonna be a lot different. It's gonna cook in about 10 minutes, but I think I'm gonna go ahead, monitor my temperature, and we'll leave this on for about 10 minutes. Uh, we'll see how it's doing, and I'll probably flip it over. All right, we have been on for about 12 minutes or so, and of course we're cooking indirect. I don't know if we're gonna be able to see this or not. Um, so our really thickest one, we've got at 80, our top one, number one, probe number one at 82 degrees, and then our smaller one is at 94. Again, we're going for about 145 is the final temperature. And so what I'm gonna do, and I've got my nice little barbecue gloves here to make sure I don't burn my hands, hopefully. Go ahead and flip over. We necessarily need to flip it this early, but we will anyway. All right, and we're gonna keep going. All right, our meat is doing pretty well. We're at 109 on the smaller piece and 100 degrees on the biggest. And unfortunately, I didn't start this three hours ago because my recipe for chimichurri sauce says that it's supposed to sit in the fridge for three hours. So you're watching this video now, you'll know that, and you'll get that started early. Uh, I'm gonna do a little time delay of this, but basically for the ingredients, um, it calls for shallots. I'm just gonna use um, uh, chopped green onions. It calls for a Fresno chili, uh, which is like a red chili that you can substitute a jalapeno for. I'm gonna go ahead and do, um, gosh, what kind of chili is this? You know what, when you turn 50, you forget a lot of things. I'm gonna use this large chili whose name I don't remember, and I will remember later with this jalapeno. Um, anyway, so we're gonna make that make it a little bit spicy. We've got fresh parsley, we got fresh jalapeno, we have fresh oregano, um, and we're gonna put that with some red wine and some uh, uh, olive oil. We're gonna do some salt, kosher salt is what I was trying to think of earlier, which I usually have, and I almost have used it all up. Um, anyway, I've got some salt, and um, I'm gonna need to chop up some garlic cloves as well. Here we go. All right, we are we are doing great according to my watch. We've been on for about 30 minutes and our temperatures you can see this are looking like about 132 and 136. So it's pretty close actually. And again, we're going for 145. So we'll go ahead and flip again. Oh my, that is smelling like something pretty special. All right, so I'm getting more I bet we need about another 10 or 15 minutes and I think we're gonna be good. Okay, we are actually just over 145. We're at 148 and 147, which is gonna be a little bit warmer than, I don't know, probably some people would want to do this. I personally um, am not a fan of really rare meats. Moose, go. You need to go. Uh. And so we're going to be a little bit on 
we're not going to be on the rare side for this is what I'm trying to say. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and set this off to the grill and hope that Moose is not going to help himself. We can see that in the light. Ah, we'll get a better shot inside. Ooh, that's looking good. All right, and now what I'm going to do, if I had a fancier grill, we'd have other ways to do this. I'm going to go ahead and scatter my coals here to the middle. I'm done with my indirect cooking. And we're just going to put a little sear on the outside. Done. Of course, our cooking temperatures are still continuing to go up a little bit at this point. That's what happens, but I think it'll probably still be okay. I think I'm just going to probably do something like a minute and a half on each side. That's going to be it. All right. Next time I do one of these, I think I will probably put it on for the sear at about 135. Uh, so we keep the temperature down a little bit. Just do about another minute or a minute and a half and we're done. All right, I am gonna take it off and we are at 40, hmm, about 42 minutes total cook time. A couple minutes of sear here at the end. Our temperatures are 158 for our thickest picanha and 154 for, well, I guess I got that in reverse. 154 for the, no, it's actually, huh, that's interesting. Yeah, the thickest is the hottest at 159. Wow, okay, that's weird. All right, there we go. Not a very good shot. We'll get a better shot inside. All right, 45 minutes later. And here we are, and our final temperatures are 163 on the thickest and 152. So that's going to be <laughs> that's going to be medium, probably to medium well. Now, if we were at Fogo de Chao, we would be coming around with the skewers and just cutting it right off onto our onto our plates, but. We are not going to do that. We are going to go ahead and just cut into this and then put this out. So let's go ahead and cut into this and we're going to try to cut across the grain here and see how it is. We've got our chimichurri sauce to put on it here momentarily. I can't resist. Mm. It's good. Okay, that's good. Stop. Have a bite. Wow. Oh my gosh. All right, it is the time of truth, and truth be told, I have had. A few bites already. Could have been a little more medium rare or a little more on the medium side, but like I said, that's kind of how our family kind of likes our our uh, steak. This should have marinated for three hours. It did not. <laughs> so I'm sure this is uh, not quite looking precisely as it should, but It was delicious without the sauce. Mm. That's very special. Very special. Mom is on some <laughs> drugs tonight. <laughs> oh, I just really good day. That sucks.